In this video I'm going to show you how I'm going to use this cabinet maker's vise to turn my assembly table into a woodworking bench. So this table is really simple. It's just a frame of three quarter inch wood and then I just put on some MDF so I could have a nice flat surface. But the problem with it is that I can't really do much woodworking. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this section right here which is about 10 inches and I'm going to make a woodworker's bench out of scrap lumber and then put this end vise on the end of it so that I can clamp my woodworking pieces in that I'm using for hand tools and have a place to work. So what I think the first thing I'm going to do is cut the left side of this off right here all the way down up to this point so that I can put the structure in and then when I'm done with that then I'll cut the end of this table off because I don't really need it that long and I don't have a lot of room in the shop and then I'll trim it so that everything is flush to the end of the vise. So let's get started. Now the model I bought was this Grizzly H788 and it's somewhere around a hundred dollars but there are three or four other uh, brands on Amazon and they are as low as about 43 bucks and up and they're all basically the same design so I'll uh, put product links in the description below and it's very simple uh, this is uh, shown upside down so you flip it up and you bolt this part to the underside of your bench and then you put in a block for hardware here and then you put in a handle so they don't have the completed uh, drawing but I can show you how this will look so the first thing I noted about this is this is a lot heavier duty than I was expecting. So that, that weighs a ton. And so that's going to be really steady and really strong. And I was going to make one of these with pipe clamps, but I wanted something really, really heavy duty. And I didn't want to mess around making it on my own, even though it's certainly possible. And another thing I want is I wanted a single handle. And most of the pipe clamp jigs that are built on the internet have two, and I just didn't want to mess with that. So that's how it works. Just put in our own handle, and then I'll, I'll make a big block here. And the block has to be quite tall so that it can go to the top of the bench. And that will all be custom made later on. So now that's flush, that uh, nicked that a little bit, but that's not bad. And then now we're ready to build this section. And so the first one thing I need to do is I need to put a support right here to hold the end. And then I'll put, I'm going to make this all in one piece from here on out. And I'm going to go out about 10 inches. This will be the support in front. Go ahead and get that installed. So I want this to be flush. So I'm going to use a block of wood as a spacer because I'm going to build this one and a half inches thick. I'll do the same thing on the other side. So 
So I went ahead and installed another support on the other side. So now I have a 10 by 53 and a half inch area where I can do my woodworking bench. So I'll make it out of one and a half inch lumber and I'll build it to this point right here first. Then we'll install the vise and complete the hardware needed to make it work. So when I built my house, we used a 2 by 12s And so I'm going to take this old 2 by 12 and I'm wondering what to do with it. And I'm going to turn it into the bench top. And I was originally going to glue a bunch of pieces together, but this is going to be easier. I just have to cut it to size. And then, as you can see, I used it for scaffolding. I'll get that all cleaned up. So there's a little bit of twist in the board. I may have to uh, take a joiner, fix the twist, and then raise this a little bit. This knot here won't be seen. I'm going to cut that off. Uh, but we'll see how flat I can get that and might have to do a little bit of adjustment. Now when you're working with old lumber like this, you never want to take it like this uh, with, and put it into your joiner or your planer or something like that because you're going to ruin your blades. So a good way to take this off is sand paper. I'm just going to use this, this sander here and I found out that right here, this is high so I'm going to have to plane this down so I'm going to start here and clean this up. So I think the easiest way to do this is to just put it in place and you can see that there is, it's high here and I've got the rock so I'm going to take, I can do one of two things. I can take it on the bottom or I can clamp it down and then take this down so it's flush. And I think that'll probably be the easiest way. But one way or another we're going to get that twist out. Okay, that's a lot better. Uh, I think what I'll do is go ahead and install it, and then I'll take a longer square across a larger surface of the table and try and get this as flat as possible with a plane before I sand it. So I'm going to go ahead and put in three screws, and I'm going to countersink them kind of deep so that I can fill them and still be able to work, plane them or whatever I have to do to plane the board. So I think the best way to drill these holes is to use something like this jig I made that matches and uses as a guide and then I'll just clamp this on the front here and then drill through it and that should be a lot easier to get this aligned. We just put a little shim in here and so that's flush and drill right through it and then we'll mount these uh, to this board. Probably do it in two steps. Put this one in first to get this so this is not in the way right here and then come back in and mount this. Alright, so got this installed 
And so the next step, this moves pretty freely. Next step, I need to build this jaw right here out of wood. And I got a little chip out here, which is unfortunate. I may fill this, but that's a bummer because I just didn't want to look at that. We have a working vise. I need to put a handle in. I'm going to cut this off next because this uh, is in the way of the handle. So I'm going to reduce the size of this table. And one of the reasons is I'm, I'm out of room anyway, so that extra eight or inches or so doesn't matter. So next thing I'll do is scribe a mark right here all the way across and cut that end off. So all I could find was this dowel size here, which is two inch, and I can't find my forstner bits, so I'm just going to use this spade bit and drill a hole and then do the same thing the other end and then glue it on, and that'll keep that from flopping off. I'm going to do that off camera. Okay, so I've got a hole I drilled in each of the ends here, so I'm just going to do something like this and glue these on and then that'll automatically go down to the either end and then I can just leave it like that. So I'll glue that next. So I want to use this with bench dogs and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue a piece of hardwood on the top so that you can put a board like this and then it'll go up against your bench dogs and hold that in place. Well, while the glue's setting up, I'm going to go ahead and sand this down and make this look a little bit nicer. So there's still a little bit more work to do on this, but I think that's enough for one day. I like this vise. It holds boards really well, and I think it's going to work out great for my purposes. It's actually a lot higher quality than I was expecting. The only uh, problem I see is that it didn't come with a, a template to drill these holes, and so uh, if you're going to do this, I would suggest that you drill them oversized because the first time I did it, they're too tight and so the clearances aren't quite right. And so when I did this one, I made them much bigger. And that is going to help out for any alignment issues and then you have some adjusting room. So that's my suggestion. Looks like I've got to take off my glue here. But this isn't set up yet, so I can't mess with this for another couple hours. Now I have a nice good solid clamp and what I'm going to do next is I'm going to put dogs in here so that I can plane boards like this and that's why I made that higher so that I have a uh, lip to catch and so you just move the vise forward and it presses up against the dogs and now I, have, I can do anything I want with this clamp. So it's about a hundred bucks and they have some cheaper ones. I'll give you the links and thanks for watching.